Aloha, and welcome to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday at 2 o'clock in the studios of in, located in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. And the uh, Think Tech Studios is, uh, as you would think, very high tech. And we've got some great technicians here that's going to help us today. Uh, we've got two very interesting guests. Uh, Gary Novosel has actually been on Think Tech Hawaii show about a month ago, and we're going to dive into a little bit more details on uh, what his company is and how very beneficial it is to some of our best friends here in Hawaii, the, the dog community. So Gary is the CEO of Raw Dog, and we've got the director of sales, who's a very charismatic person. Um, we're going to try to control her a little bit today because she talks so much and gets so excited. But Irma Baptiste is going to be joining us today. So Irma, Gary, it's so great to have you here today. Welcome. Thanks for having Thank us, Reg. All right. Thank you. Um, you know, just to get this started, Gary, you've uh, you you came to Hawaii how long ago? Uh, we've been here about four and a half years. Four and a half years, and you got started with Raw Dog right at that time, or? Uh, well. For the first uh, couple months, uh, you know, I pursued the traditional job market, and once I realized that uh, that wasn't my passion and there was no good quality raw dog food, I started to make my own raw dog food for my dog, and uh, that's how I got started in this. So you kind of did this at an act of love for your own uh, family member? Yep. Your, your kind of an act of necessity, but yeah, totally an act of love. Very good. And so you basically started this from scratch. It was something that you kind of learned along the way? Uh, yeah, I've been feeding raw for several years, knew the benefits of it. When we came here, I was actually surprised with the quality of proteins and vegetables that we have on the island, that nobody was doing this. So, you know, starting to meet farmers and ranchers and, you know, building our sources of ingredients. Uh, yeah, we started from very small to where we are today. Very good. And Irma, you've kind of helped with that process. I mean, Raw Dog is in, in a variety of different locations now, right? It is. Raw Dog is in a variety of local locations on island, and we are growing, which is always wonderful. And the direct result that you see, the impact that it has on the dogs, is you see it within weeks, and there's just no comparison. Right. And, you know, I know I, I've heard the story before, and it's always very impressive, but. You know, Gary, you've got an interesting story to tell about, you know, how significant the ingredients that you have uh, can really impact the uh, the life and the health of the, the animal, the dog. Right. Uh, the ingredients that we chose to use are all human-grade ingredients. All our ingredients are organic, uh, grass-fed beef, all from Hawaii. We also use venison, which is an invasive species here, so we work with conservation groups uh, to bring that in for our product. And that's a controlled process, so, yep. you know, and nobody should have any issues with that. No, nobody should have any issues. That actually comes out of a USDA facility before we get it. So it meets the standards for human consumption. We just happen to make it for dogs. See, so it's very high levels of standard. You know, yes. the standards are set very high. Um, and so this has got to be one of the best quality products on the market, is it not? You know, we did a little bit of research into mainland companies because I was curious if there were others that produced food the way that we do. And, you know, we found some really good raw companies on the mainland, but none that have the quality of ingredients that we do, and certainly none that come from Hawaii. We, we benefit from the volcanic soil here, so our animals that eat the wild grasses and our farmers who grow in these soils, we see enormous benefit in mineral content, vitamin content that I don't think you're going to find on the mainland. So actually, I, I guess what I'm hearing is that, you know, because of the richness of our soil and the animals that eat that soil that we use to make the raw dog food itself, um, they're really healthy to begin with, and that just makes for a much more healthier product that, that you're ma manufacturing. Sure. I mean, you are what you eat, so if you use the best ingredients that you can, the, the end result is going to benefit the human or the animal. Right. And I know we've had you know, some examples of some you know, before and after pictures, and, and they're dramatic. You've got those on your website, too, don't you? We do. 
All right, so there's a lot of information on your website, actually, uh, before and after pictures, as well as more information about the product. And that's, can they buy the product from the website? Sure. We have the ability to buy the product from the website, and we ship directly to people's homes, and that's on all the islands. We also have nine retailers that carry our product. Most are on Oahu, one on Maui, and they all carry all our product lines. Right. And Irma, you've got some good stories too. You have a, a personal do. pet that I you do. have that uses the product. I do. So we have uh, two rescues, two rescue dogs. And Lennon, who is uh, about four, he's going to be four in the spring, so I guess he's three and a half. We, um, he was actually born behind a trash can. He was one of five puppies, wow. but only two survived. And he just had severe mange, so mm -hmm. severe that there was no fur if any. So a and hairless so dog, basically. He looked hairless, he did. And he was so weak, even more so than the visual appearance mm. was that he was weak. He couldn't even shake, he couldn't, you know, mm. scratch. And they kept, you know, the, the place that we did rescue him from uh, was giving him different kinds of kibble. And dogs have a challenge with digesting that type of food. Mm. It wasn't raw. And so finally, after numerous vet visits, we decided to switch him to raw, raw dog. And they, it was at the farmer's market in Pearl Ridge where we would purchase it. Suddenly, we saw improvements, not just in his fur, but in his energy level. He, he became that perpetual puppy all over again. And even at age three and a half, four now, he still has that that fervor, that excitement, and that what dogs should really have and right. embody. And he's um, got his fur back? He's got so much fur, even the vet is amazed because his mom also has the same condition, but his mom is not on raw dog food, so she frequents the vet a bit more. He just goes in for his annual checkup and uh, visits, says, says hello, and always leaves with a clean bill of health. And we attribute that 1,000% to raw dog. Very good. And so as, as a result of having that experience, you've got a special place in your heart oh, for raw absolutely, dog. absolutely, because we saw the tangible impact. And so when we got our next rescue, it I mean, it was a no-brainer. And this dog is uh, a Rhodesian Ridgeback mix. So he was supposed to be bigger. Um, when he was When we did rescue him, he was fairly weak, and they, the, the vet had instructed or suggested for us to use a certain type of kibble. And I, I said, well, you know, the other dogs are already on raw. And he's like, well, okay, we'll see. Uh, but he's fabulous. I mean, he's, well, he's cute and maybe I'm biased, but there's, there's, no, there's no health issue at all with him. He has not had to go. I mean, he's not yet a year, but he's no need um, to go to the vet for any, you know I'm, yeah. I'm curious you know I mean I hear all the good stories mm -hmm. about raw dog food and, mm -hmm. and raw dog itself and and how it really improves the health why are not the veterinarians on board with this what what's their reluctance do you have any idea well I have uh, a couple first I don't think any veterinarian gets into the veterinary uh, because they don't love dogs or animals what it comes down to is veterinarians tend to be in the sick care business. They mm -hmm. do surgeries, they're excellent at diagnosis, but they don't have a dog come into their practice and say, let me come up with a plan for you so you're going to have a healthy dog and I never have to see you again. Kind of the preventative measures. Right. Side of things. So they, they tend to be sick care providers, and we like to think of ourselves as wellness providers. Mm -hmm. So, but you know, the overall health of the dog has got to be paramount. You know, they, they need to be concerned about that. And, and I would like to think that if this is good for the dog and we've got proven results mm -hmm. of that, that mm -hmm. they should be more receptive to being able to, you know, suggest it or to go along with it, you know, especially with your experiences. I think, I think as long as there's, they see the visual and they see the tangible result of changing the diet to healthier, because it's... Yes, it is a meat product, but there's also nutrients in there like seasonal vegetables, which otherwise would not be. Mm -hmm. um, and so supplementing that, they get the, the nutrients that they would even if they were out in the wild. Um, when dogs are out in the wild, they will eat every three days and gorge. And what do they eat? Natural things, meats, vegetables, and they're fine. And, and they can exist in the wild. So this is 
the exact same thing. It's just that now there are human fur right. children. Yeah. And what's interesting, one of the um, the pictures, it, I don't know why, but for some reason kind of sticks in my head, mm -hmm. is the difference in the the poop of a dog that's Let's eating raw poop. dog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, well, this is a family show. So, um, you know, but there's, there's, it's interesting to see that the difference between a dog that's on a, a regular type dog food and one compared uh, to a raw dog mm -hmm. food. Um, and I know we had a picture of that. I don't know if we're going to be able to call it up or not, but um, it was a significant difference. And Gary, can you just speak? Why, why does that happen? Yeah, it's actually pretty simple. Dogs lack two enzymes that humans have. One is an enzyme in the saliva that breaks down starches into simple sugars. Without that enzyme, the sugars ferment in the stomach and they wind up producing the allergy symptoms that mm. we know as paw licking and chewing and ear infections and shedding and hot spots, rashes. Uh, mange is another common one. We got a picture of it on the screen right now and, and you can see the one on the right is a normal dog food diet right? and the one on the left is the raw dog food diet. It, this is actually my dog. He is a, uh, unfortunately for him, a test dog. So <laughs> I put him on kibble for a bit of time just so we could take a picture of his stool and what you're seeing is undigested food mm -hmm. uh, and it has a distinct uh, bad smell to it because of the fermented starches. The one on the left is after a couple days back on raw and it's very tiny. So what that tells you is uh, the ratio of food absorbability between mm -hmm. raw mm -hmm. and kibble. You have a very high food absorbability or bioavailability of the food on a raw diet and on a kibble based diet, um, you know, most of the time people are throwing 50% of their money out in their backyard. That's a good point. I guess the, um, there's also, a, I would imagine, a cleansing process that takes place so that the, the, the dog system itself, the digestive system, is actually more healthy too. It is. Uh, all the dog systems become more healthy and more efficient over time. Dogs are one of the best self-healers on the planet. Mm. You provide them even a moderately uh, nutritious food and you'll see the results of that food. Uh, within a day or two, energy levels come back and you very quickly start to see those allergy symptoms go away. You provide them a high quality food and that happens even quicker. How early should a dog get on this type of diet? Is there, you know, from birth? I mean, obviously after the nursing is over, but you know, I mean, the sooner the better? Yeah, in, in the wild puppies will go on a raw diet uh, as soon as they're done weaning. Uh, the process is their mother eats, um, you know, she will uh, regurgitate and the puppies will eat that and get the benefit of the digestive enzymes of the mother with broken down food. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I've, I've never met a dog in the wild that's mastered fire and uh, their moms can't go out and grab a bag of puppy chow. So yeah, that's, so that's it's, the transition. It's all natural. It's all natural. And what's interesting is that this is that this is all natural, not only uh, for the dog, but also for Hawaii. I mean, we can do all of that here. It's a homegrown type of product. It is. Yeah, we we hire locally. We pay taxes locally. We sell locally. We don't ship to the mainland. Uh, we try to help as many farmers and ranchers as we can. Mm -hmm. If they're not organic, we try to help them down the road uh, to become organic. Uh, we buy their seconds, which have bug holes possibly mm. in some of the vegetation. Bug holes mean the bugs had a choice and they picked a vegetable which is higher in nutrition content because, you know, bugs aren't dumb. So what we get is generally of higher quality than what you would find in a grocery store, nutritionally speaking. Right. It's just, it's not visually appealing, but that's right. not an issue when you process the, the dog food. Not at all. Yeah, so that makes sense. Um, when we get back, what I'd like to be able to do, um, and we're going to go on a short break here, but uh, when we get back, I'd, I'd like to spend a little bit more time talking about how the, the dog food is actually processed and manufactured and, and I guess distributed. And, and I guess, Irma, you get involved in a little bit of the sales efforts on that part and, and go to some of the trade shows and, and things like that. So that'll be the second half of the show. Uh, but this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. Uh, we're here with the Raw Dog Food Company, and we're going to be right back in about one minute. 
For a very healthy summer, watch Viva Hawaii. We're giving you the best tips and with our best health coach here. So, Viva Health Coach. Viva la comida saludable. Hi, my name is Justini Spiritu. This is my co-host, Matthew Johnson. Every Thursday at 4 p.m., we host the Hawaii Food and Farmers Series. This is the place you can come to for insight on the perspective and history and passions of Hawaii's farmers and all folks involved in Hawaii's local food system. What kind of folks do we have on? So we have everyone from local farmers, we have foodies, chefs, we also have journalists, uh, researchers, anyone who's actually working to help make Hawaii's local food system that much better. So join us every Thursday and uh, tweet into us and ask us some questions and leave your comments as well. Welcome back. This is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're here with Gary Noisel and Irma Baptiste from the Raw Dog Company. Uh, and we're talking a little bit about you know, the, the company itself as well as the product that it sells and all of the very impressive results that that food has uh, to help, I guess, dogs, our best friends, uh, stay healthy and, um, and come back from some illness. And we actually have some before and after pictures uh, that we're going to share with you uh, that shows you know what the the animal looked like before and then after going on a raw dog diet uh, what they look like now and I'm going to ask Gary if maybe he can uh, explain what some of these pictures are as they pop up. Sure uh, this is uh, actually one of my friend's dogs you can see the picture on the left uh, red eyes you see the expression of the dog uh, the second picture this is three days the eyes have cleared up all the redness is gone you see the posture change in the dog uh, this is something that is uh, almost immediate when a dog is switched to raw dog food. Uh, and, and this is just a close-up of the inside of the eyes. You have a slight amount of eye infection on the left um, and on the right. Gone in three days, you can e even see the change uh, in the eye color itself, not as red and uh, turning back into its natural color state. Very good. Uh, and I, we might have another picture. Here we go. Now that's, yeah. that's disturbing. But this, that's, uh, that's this is disturbing. This is an intake photo of a dog named Neptune, and this is when we were doing our animal feeding trials at the Oahu SPCA. We had 26 dogs. They were kind of the worst of the worst. Uh, we, we know that we see a lot of dogs <coughs> coming in with mange. The second picture is after a vet had been taking care of the dog, servicing it for about a year and this is the best they can do. You see the body language, you still, still see open skin area. Uh, the, the next thing that follows after that is, you know, we put the dog on raw food. After a week, we started to see immediate hair regrowth, posture changes in the dog, stool reduction and all the symptoms. Uh, the picture you're looking at is after five weeks, full hair and coat regrowth, all of the allergy symptoms have, have, were gone. This dog had been at the Oahu SPCA for about a year and a half, and at the seven-week point, this dog was adopted. The reason is people don't want to adopt or are reluctant to do adopt a dog that looks like a medical bill. Right. And when they see something that looks like a family member, you're much more likely to have the dog adopted, and what you're seeing now is the family that, that did adopt him. And it's a significant difference from the, the, the first picture that we saw, which was disturbing, to yeah. what it is now. I mean, that's, you wouldn't even know it was the same dog. No, and, you know, I, I see these changes frequently. This was the one I think that really touched my heart the most because you see a lot of dogs in shelters with mange, and the treatments that they're given have no possibility of solving it. It's something very easy to solve in nutrition. Now, are the... The shelters that the dogs go to, are they able to provide your product? Um, one of the things that we find is some of the shelters have agreements with large uh, kibble pet food companies. So part of that contractor agreement is they be the only provider of raw dog food. The Hawaii Humane Society on the Big Island, uh, I, I just found this out and it's very disturbing to me that animals that come in with mange 
are immediately put on the unadoptable list and that leads to euthanization mm -hmm. and I feel that most of those dogs can be fixed and very quickly if they had the capability uh, and willingness to serve raw food to them. Wow, that's, that's sad. Uh, just out of curiosity to put it in context, at least for me, um, roughly to, to feed a dog for a month, and we're talking about a four week period, okay. but to feed a dog for a month with raw dog would cost about how much? I guess the size of the dog will help determine that sure. a little bit, but for a medium size, average size dog. Well, uh, you know, for a small dog, let's say it's a six pound dog, we're looking at about $30 a month. Uh, you know, as you move up in weight, uh, a 40 pound dog is, you know, right around $90 a month. And then as you go up higher in weight, we also offer um, bulk packaging in some of our foods to reduce the monthly price. Uh, 80 pound dog, you, you might only be looking at about $105, $110. The things that are gone are the dental cleanings, the allergies, mm -hmm. all of the antibiotics, uh, the 10 special shampoos you probably have at home to they try to get rid better. of the dog smell, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the consistent the shedding, smell. which only happens, is supposed to happen every two weeks, not continuously 24 hours a day. So the cost is really offset. What I'm, what I'm kind of leading up to and I know this may come as a surprise. So this is a Reg Baker thought, and I have these occasionally, and some of them smell good and some of them don't. Um, but I mean, for a hundred bucks a month, somebody could actually adopt a dog and provide them with the raw dog food uh, and, and make a dog that's in a shelter healthy again. Yep. You know, if they aren't able to do it, you know, for budgetary reasons or contractual reasons, uh, then somebody could maybe make a contribution to do that for them uh, and and the dog could get healthy again and become adoptable yep you know that's uh that might be an interesting little program that uh you know somebody might want to think about we saw that with lennon though when lennon was in at the ospca he was just tucked in the corner i mean he couldn't you know scratch himself i mean dogs do that all the time he is the most playful dog out of our three and we attributed it to his nutrition. And he's getting all the nutrients that he needs, none of the excess that they don't need. And so it's, it's worth every penny that we invest. He's not having to go to the vet. We can take him out to the beach and go hiking, no problem. Um, but we make sure that he is very much on raw dog. You sure, Let's, uh, we got a, a photo of a dog that went through a little bit of a personality change. I guess. <laughs> Look at that. This, this is Ruby, and uh, the, the sarong was just her mom's idea because she thought it was cute, not for any medical reasons. But you can see the brown around the muzzle, a little sore on the nose, slightly overweight. The body language kind of shows it all. Tired, uh, you know, not, not what a five-year-old dog should look like. So after about a month on the food, um, well, this is, this is another picture of Ruby laying down so you can see um, her uh, big bones, as we call them. Uh, but she was about 15 to 20 pounds overweight in this picture. Following a month on the food, you see a completely wow. different posture. Muzzle is now fully white, the, she, the spot on the nose. She looks happy. She's, She's smiling. smiling. She, yeah. she is, and you can actually see an wow. abdomen as opposed to fat. She goes on runs now, she plays, whereas before, you know, sleeping was her favorite activity. And the so soreness on the nose is gone? It, it's completely gone. Shedding is completely gone after 30 days. Uh, See, and that, that's my point, is that just having a 30-day diet of this can make mm -hmm. a significant difference uh, in the dog. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's um, that's certainly worth adopting. For for hundred bucks, you can have a, a life changing event oh, take happy. place. They're happy. They're yeah. happy. I mean, you can't put a price on happy and, <laughs> and healthy. You know, I know that by the time somebody finds us, they've been through multiple vet visits, mm -hmm. multiple medications, multiple shampoos. Mm -hmm. They they've tried all sorts of things, and then you know, here comes Raw Dog Hawaii saying we can fix that. Uh, we're not like vets, we're not like the big box stores because I provide a money back guarantee on every single thing we sell because you've kind of already been, you know, through the ringer a few times and, and you've paid a fair amount of money for it. So if it doesn't work for a customer, I'm not going to make them pay for dog food that doesn't work for them. So it's 100% no questions, money back guarantee. You know, try it and see what happens. I don't happens. think there's very many dog food 
manufacturers that'll do that. Right. Well, there certainly aren't very, very many vets that would do it, and uh, I know there aren't very many dog food manufacturers that would do it. Well, yeah. and if you look at the ingredients on the back of every label, you know what's yeah. in there. There's uh, no I'm glad you brought that up, Irma. Can, can you spend just a minute or two on how the, the manufacturing process, how does this all work and how does it go through it? And, and you've got a plant here, right, in mm -hmm. Kalihi? Yeah, we have a plant on King Street in Oahu. Um, the, the process is similar to what's called the wild prey model. We use the whole animal. So it's not just the leftover parts after they've taken the parts for human consumption. We use whole chicken with uh, whole organ meat. Uh, the cow, we use the entire cow, other than head, hide, hooves, feet, feathers, digestive tract. So not only is the dog getting you know, the chuck steak and the flank steak, they're getting the filet mignon and you know, the, the ribeye. And same with the deer, they're, they're getting the whole animal. And the, the vegetation that they would normally get is in the stomach of the animal. It's already been broken down. They have digestive enzymes, chlorophyll available mm -hmm. to them. So we do provide a few additives in the form of organic vegetables, but that's to make it a complete and balanced diet for the dog. So we're, we're kind of one-upping the ancestral diet to make sure that it complies with today's standards for complete and balanced. Right, and so you get all this raw materials yep. and it comes into the manufacturing plant mm -hmm. and then you run it through a processing machine. We, we run it through a few. Uh, first is to crush it down into small stew size pieces and the carcasses or the chickens that we get completely frozen. So from the time we receive it until the time it's manufactured into um, the form factors you see here, it's never thawed. It never comes up above 23 degrees mm -hmm. ever again. And we produce uh, nuggets for smaller sized dogs and we produce hamburger patties that are uh, eight ounces. Um, our box now is 100% compostable. Uh, we uh, are actually looking at a compostable shrink wrap for the patties on the inside because we, we are also INA friendly. Um, we we want to give back to the community and that's... And I guess what's on the screen now is some of the final, the finished product, I guess, after it goes through the machine and it gets all sorted up and it gets processed into the usable type of format, right. uh, then it gets packaged and this is one of your double doors? Yep, this is one of our double doors. This is our friends at the Public Pet on YLA Avenue. And you can see our variety of flavors of uh, nuggets on the top shelf, bones, uh, green tripe, some of the bulk uh, chubs on the left-hand side, and then our four, five different flavors uh, of food and below that. Now, and, and I know we're running out of time, and I apologize. I, we could talk about this for a while, but I, I just wanted you to, to have a minute to talk about the new product uh, the ahi product. It's just now coming out. I didn't know this, but apparently dogs really like to eat fish. Dogs really like to eat fish, and fish is probably one of the healthiest proteins that that they can get. Again, locally sourced, um, you know, line caught, so it's sustainably harvested, and comes to us frozen just like everything else, and, and we produce... And here's a picture of what it looks like. Yep, mm -hmm. here's a picture of what it looks like. And uh, this, this particular flavor, the scent of the food, um, just drive do drives dogs nuts. Uh, and, and I can smell it and I'm getting a little hungry too, so. <laughs> it'll it'll probably be one of the best foods uh, you've ever eaten. Right. So. Very good. Well, like I said, I wish we had more time, but we've got to wrap up. Thank you both for being here Thank today. You. Thank you. Uh, this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We air live every Thursday at 2 o'clock. Uh, we highlight companies and individuals that are successful in Hawaii. Looking forward to seeing you again, hopefully next week.